Hey guys, welcome back to the JPM Performance Channel. It is once again time for a shop tour. We only have two more shop tours left in December because we're not going to be here on the 28th. So here we are on the 14th. We'll do next week and I'll we'll kiss 2023 goodbye and then I'll see you guys in January. So we'll get right into the shop tour. As you guys always know, there's always things flipping around. So right in the middle of starting the assembly on this, uh, it's actually an endurance engine. This is a B18, B1 engine. So non-VTEC B18 Honda engine. Now somebody, so the customers bought this, bought this block from somebody and you can see, I don't know who it was, but somebody spent a massive amount of time polishing the outside of this block. They did the same thing with the cylinder head. So while I don't, I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing this. You're taking out some stress risers and things like that. And it looks kind of fancy and whatnot. I can't even imagine the amount of hours that somebody spent on this. So is it an okay thing to do? I guess if you don't have anything better else to do, but I wouldn't say that it's really necessary. But um, anyway, putting in some nice forged components, forged pistons, forged rods, you can see just in the middle of uh, working on uh, clearancing the rings for each bore, getting all that taken care of, and we'll be looking good. Did finish up uh, Doug Weaver's quaif. I know we've been talking about, uh, I think last week it was just sitting in pieces over on the bench over there. Um, you can see it's completely assembled, quaif close ratio transmission, gear set for his F-Production Miata. Ready to go. Uh, we'll be seeing his car, I believe, sometime in January. He's going to bring it down, and uh, we're going to get this installed and do a couple other things on his car and uh, get him ready for the season as well. Did get uh, a new customer with a couple new engines. You can see I've got a bit of a pile here. These are Mazda MZR 2.0-liter NCs, and these are going to be getting built for the SMX class. If you don't know what the SMX class is, it's basically Mazda's newest version of Spec Miata. Um, but it is all uh, NC MX-5s with a very uh, specific build. So the, the interesting thing about this engine build is Mazda went to Roush, yes, that Roush, and they had them do cylinder heads, and you're required to run this cylinder head. And the thing that is unique about these, as you can see in the ports, is these are all computer CNC'd. All of the porting is CNC'd. So that's the exhaust side. Take a look at this intake side. Every one of them are the same. They have a very specific uh, chamber volume. And uh, these all come straight from Roush. You're not allowed to do anything to them except for obviously CC the combustion chamber to make sure that we get our correct head gasket thickness uh, for the 11 to 1 compression limit that we are required to run. So um, I've actually, they actually uh, come with some Molly pistons and rings and uh, I've got two of those to build. I've got a customer in Kansas City who's building two cars for SMX. So he brought me their core engines. We're getting into that. Um, I've kind of got things kind of spread out all over. Did get another new customer in this week too. You can't see it in here, but inside of this box is John Sewell's STL B18C1 engine. Shout out to Mike Taylor for helping me sell these Honda motors. So Mike, uh, Mike ran his last year and is super fast. And uh, his buddy John came to me and we're going to do the same thing that we did for Mike. And we're going to build another killer STL B18 VTEC engine. So we'll be getting into this in the next, uh, may still get, get it apart here this week. We'll see. But uh, Winter time around here it has a lot to do with uh, building engines, so that's what we're working on. So that's kind of what I've been doing as far as customer work goes. Got the uh, 97 Miata done. Uh, Bob's NC is still sitting over here for sale. I haven't really advertised it, um, but it's kind of ready to go. I've had a bunch of bites on it, but I haven't really advertised it. So I think once the new year comes around, we'll probably get this moved down the road. Uh, I've got Ken Kennard's engine 
laid out here. You can't really see it because I've got it all covered up, but got a head gasket ordered for him so we can get that back together. We're looking good over there. And then uh, I have had, of course, some more time to work on the Mazda 2. So last week we had talked about how I had the bearing problems um, and the hub failures. So we've got new bearings and the new hubs are installed. Just uh, waiting for a little more time to assemble all of this. Uh, but in the meantime, and it still looks messy inside the car, guys, but everything is wired. So I've got, you can see there's stuff everywhere. This is actually the antenna for the Flagtronics. You can see the Flagtronics is on. Um, I, I need to start looming, but I didn't want to put anything together until we got kind of everything finished up. But one of the more important things that I did get done, you can see I've got the dash kind of configured here. Um, this is the LCU-1, which after about 20 seconds will go to free air. That's what that just did. As you can see right there, that's 23.297 free air on air fuel. And I got the CAN bus from the MoTeC hooked up. So turn our ignition on and everything will come up on the dash. So we've got, this is the way I kind of like to do it. I've got water temperature, oil temperature. It's kind of good to see that they're identical. Uh, we've got oil pressure here, fuel pressure here, air fuel ratio. And for right now, I've got predictive time and best time up on here. You can go through and change um, uh, different dashes. These things you can put like as many things on them as you want, and you can log as much as you want. But I was very happy to get the CAN bus working and integrate it into the dash so I don't have to deal with um, separate sensors because I've already got all of those sensors going into the MoTeC, so why not just send it right into the dash? So actually looking really good here. Everything works. The last thing I need to do is finish up the exhaust. I've got my two oxygen sensors that are going to be going down through this hole that you saw a couple weeks ago. And once I get the exhaust finished and get this thing running, then we can turn this disaster into a proper loomed up race car. So that's what we are working on there. Um, I haven't spent a lot of time on these MoTeC ECUs uh, up to this point, but we're going to do some learning. So a couple more things to do. Um, if I haven't mentioned it in the past, but I know I have, I'm going to pull the fuel injectors out. I'm going to test and flow them. Um, but my list is getting shorter. So once I get that done, then I can start tearing into the other transmission and start development on the second engine that I want to get going and uh, just kind of keep chipping away. You know, here we are. We're already in December. Next thing you know, it's going to be January and we're going to want to go racing. So rocking and rolling. The car's looking good. I'm really happy that all of this kind of integrated itself together pretty well. So that's what we've got going on this week, guys. I appreciate you watching. Like I've said before, this is a bit of a slow month for me, just kind of chipping away on engines, getting things taken apart, taking a breath, because when January hits, it's going to get crazy. So hope you guys are having a great week. Hope the weather's nice where you're at. Not too bad in Topeka. Um, high 20s in the mornings, and we're, we've been getting up to about 50 during the day, which around for around here is pretty darn good. So take it while it lasts, because it won't last. So have, like I said, have a great rest of your week, guys. Thanks for watching. See you next week.